Hello, everybody. Uh, basketball community uh, in Europe. Um, it's a privilege uh, to make a presentation in this wonderful Congress. So our session is uh, about orthopedic sports medicine. So me, uh, I'm Barış Kocaoğlu uh, from Istanbul, Turkey, from Acıbadem University. And we will uh, present this session with uh, Guy Murak. Uh, from Tel Aviv, uh, who is a team doctor of uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv team. Uh, I'm also uh, a team doctor of Turkish Basketball uh, Federation, um, men's A team. So um, first of all, uh, we will start with the one of the most important problems of the uh, basketball players around the knee joints, which is the ACL and MCL injuries. And the second topic will be presented by Guy Murak about the cartilage problems at the knee joints uh, of the basketball players. And we will talk about the treatments and the return to play issue. So uh, I am happy uh, to be with you today uh, on behalf of uh, Alpo Medical Board. Uh, so I'm starting my uh, topic. Uh, ACL and MCL injuries are the most uh, frequent injuries of the knee joint uh, um, at the basketball uh, arena. Uh, so we will discuss and we will talk about these injuries. So uh, ACL injury is a non-contact injury, uh, mostly at the basketball uh, field. Uh, and uh, it can be, it can be happens uh, during a, also a contact, but most frequently we see it uh, on a non-contact injury. Uh, so we don't like this injury because uh, we, the player needs to be away from the field for a long time. Uh, let's discuss this injury. Uh, here is the here is the MRI uh, of the of the ACL injury. So. Uh, First of all, I will talk about the function of the anterior cruciate ligament. Anterior cruciate ligament uh, is important for the knee stability, mostly at the anterior and rotational stability. If we lose this uh, ligament during a contact or non-contact trauma, the, the player uh, could not uh, continue his, his profession at the field because he or she can lose uh, the, the stability of the knee joint. So when we look at the anatomy of the uh, ACL, uh, we see that ligament is very unique in its form. It is like a food of a, uh, like a duck. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is wide at this insertion at the tibia and it is, it is thin at the joint side, and it is also thick at the femoral attachment. So it is around uh, 10 millimeter uh, radius inside the joint, and it's, it's, it, has, it has a load of uh, 200 kilograms. So this is a dissection from our one of the studies. So we dissect a cadaver, cadaver here, and uh, the ACL anterocruciate ligament has two distinctive uh, ligaments, which we call them uh, double ligaments. And one of them is the anteromedial ligament. The other one is the posterolateral ligament. So these are important for the stability of the knee, mostly at 15 degrees of knee flexion and, and at extension. At the extension, the posterolateral ligament is more tight at 15 days of flexion, anteromedial ligament is more tight. So we need this ligament at the full extension and also at 15 degrees of flexion. When a um, point guard is making a, making, uh, making a stance, uh, it, it, there is a high load at the ACL ligament. The ACL ligament is flex at the 19 degrees of knee flexion. When there is an ACL uh, injury, uh, our aim is to make a reconstruction uh, for this ligament because we know that the joint fluid 
uh, stops the healing process because it contains fibrolytic activities inside this uh, joint fluid. So uh, there is no healing tissue uh, inside the joint. So we need to do a reconstruction for this ligament tear. If it is an MCL tear, MCL, medial, medial collateral ligament, is, an, is, the, is, a, is a ligament outside the knee joint, and it has a no uh, the direct uh, contact with the joint fluid, so it can heal by itself, but anterior cruciate ligament couldn't heal itself. Like when we give an example, meniscus injury is the same. If there's a tear in the meniscus tissue, there's, there will be no healing. So we need to make an operation uh, and make a um, repair surgery for the meniscus also. So our aim for the ACL reconstruction is make an uh, anatomic reconstruction and to obtain anterior and rotational stability again. When we look at our procedures after this uh, kind of injury, uh, first of all, we have to define our diagnosis. Uh, we do it with physical examination and also MRI studies. So the second important point is the uh, harvesting tissue, uh, the, 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 the tissue that we use for ACL uh, reconstruction, which is important. And the, 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 the trend is changing from time to time. Also, the placement of the femoral and tibial tunnels is, is also has changed for about 15 years. So uh, also the fixation techniques has also changed. So I will talk all of them. So the, when we look at the graft, cho graft choice, uh, uh, when we are doing an ACL reconstruction, uh, 10 years ago, we, we frequently use hamstring tendons for the ACL reconstruction, but uh, basketball players is playing at the field. They're like gladiators. So it's a collision sport. They are collision athletes. So we need to do a more stiffer uh, reconstruction. The tandem we use should be more, uh, more stiff uh, to the loads. So hamstring loses its uh, popularity and the new tendon choices, which are patellar tendon and quadriceps tendon is increasing their uh, interest. But if we use patellar tendon, there might be a anterior knee pain due to the uh, bony, bone, bone osteotomies at the patella. So uh, basketball is a jumpers uh, sport. So we don't want to interfere the patella and patellar tendon because basketball players are using their patellar tendons too much. So we don't want to harvest so much uh, from their patella. But the quadriceps tendon is a new type of tendon that we use uh, at recent years. And I will talk about all of them. So the gold standard may be uh, many years ago, uh, um, patellar tendon, but due to anterior knee pain, it shifted to hamstring tendons. But now hamstring tendons has shifted to quadriceps tendons. Quadriceps tendons uh, are more uh, logical and useful and more uh, powerful for this type of reconstruction. Tunnel choices has changed also uh, for uh, from many years. So um, 10 or 15 years ago, we used to do a transtibial single tunnel method, but now uh, it has changed to anterior medial single tunnel method. So this is, this is a diagram. Uh, 15 years ago, we used this type of tunnel, uh, which is unanatomical. Uh, while doing transtibial methods. But nowadays, uh, recent years, we used to do anteromedial portal for the, for the placement of the femoral tunnel, and uh, they are more anatomic. We can use double bundle methods, but the double bundle has some problems with the revision. So we also uh, not so much, uh, you know, optimistic while using double tendon, uh, so we, uh, we shift to single bundle and remedial portal uh, reconstruction. When you look at this publication, you see the, the, the purple one is the intact tendon. The, the, uh, the, the, the red one is the, the torn tendon, transtibial, and antremedial portal 
ligament. I mean, when you're looking at the uh, loads. So anteromedial portal reconstruction is same as the native tendon. So trastibial is uh, not, not good and safe enough for the anteromedial uh, portal reconstruction. So I can, when we look at the ligament biomechanics, uh, the anteromedial portal uh, ligament uh, femoral tunnel fixation is more, more and more physiology. So when we look at the ligament biomechanics, uh, the ACL is mostly uh, important during the 15 days of flexion and extension. We see it here. So uh, this is the this is the aim that we have to uh, we have to uh, we have to do. Um, when we look at the real surgery, I want to uh, show you a video about, about the real surgery. Uh, this is a torn ligament of a basketball player. You see, this is the torn ligament detachment from the femur. So with the anteromedial portal surgery, we drill a hole at the femur. And we drill a hole at the tibia. So we use button systems nowadays, and we pass the new tendon from the tunnels and fix the ACL. This is a quadriceps tendon. It looks more stiffer, more healthy. At 19 degrees of flexion, it should be flexed, but at 15 days of uh, knee flexion or extension, it should be tight, which means that we are doing it in an anatomical way. So let's look at the ALL. This is a new, uh, new knowledge about the knee surgery. Uh, so we use it, uh, we use this type of reconstruction in recent 10 years. So um, if we do an ACL reconstruction, after the reconstruction, if our pivot shift is still there, and if there is not enough stability after ACL reconstruction, there is one way to uh, make our reconstruction more safe is the anterolateral ligament reconstruction. So in which, which type of atlas do we choose? Uh, it is better to do it in young patients, collision athletes, which requires pivoting like basketball, and patients who have a slope higher than 12 degrees. And if the patient has a meniscal deficiency, I mean, a torn or resected meniscus, it is, it is for me in my hands, I recommend ALL, anterolateral ligament reconstruction. This is, this is a good article uh, from, uh, from the literature uh, and the, in the in our in our uh, society we call the name ACL reconstruction as Michael Jordan and ALL reconstruction as Scotty Pippen. To have the victory to win the game, you need um, a star player like Michael Jordan, and it is the ACL reconstruction. But you need to add one more player in the game to to win. To, to, to certain, to uh, secure your victory is Scotty Pippen, which we, we can name as ALL reconstruction. So ALL reconstruction is also important at, uh, at the ACL reconstruction surgeries at basketball players. This is another basketball player that we operated in our clinic. Uh, the player has a meniscus, medial meniscus tear an ACL injury, after we fix the meniscus and also ACL reconstruction, we make a um, pivot shift test after the fixation of the ACL. And we see if we, we saw um, there is a positive one pivot shift. So there is still instability and uh, laxity at the knee. So we couldn't leave the patient like this because uh, it is certain that he will have uh, a new type of in, uh, injury and tear after 
he returned to return back to the play. So uh, we we plan him to make an ALL uh, reconstruction. ALL reconstruction is very easy with this uh, modified Lemur technique. We used uh, iliotibial bands uh, as a uh, as a graft. We pass it under a lateral collateral ligament and fix it in its footprint at the femur. It is better to fix the anterior lateral ligament at 19 degrees of flexion uh, to get rid of this uh, rotational instability. So it is better to explain ACL surgery um, recovers anterior translation mostly, ALA surgery recovers rotational instability. So if the player has an anterior instability and rotational instability, we have to do both ACL and ALL reconstruction. So when we look at the return to play uh, concept after the ACL reconstruction, so we see that 60, in, in 5,500 5, uh, athletes, uh, this, this, this review article is published in uh, 2011. It's a high impact journal, uh, British Journal of Sports Medicine. So they, they, they have a conclusion that uh, after ACL reconstruction, 63% of the patients, the athletes return, to, return back to the pre-injury level. And 44 returned to competitive sports, which means that uh, one, one uh, 33 percent of the patient could not return to their uh, pre-injury level. Um, think that we have an ACL injury patient, basketball player. Let's let's think that we made a ACL reconstruction surgery. Where, when we can start the patient uh, exercises, running, and uh, when we can give him back to the field. So there are many, many, many publications about this, uh, this, uh, this concept. So uh, there is a consensus that return to the running is about uh, 12 weeks after the operation, which means that three months. Return to the sport is not mean that return to the, 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 the winning score, return to the winning uh, player, uh, return to the player uh, winning type. So return to the participation, return to the running is mostly three months after uh, ACR reconstruction. Return to the practice with the team uh, is about six or nine months after the reconstruction, but return to the real play uh, and um, game winning uh, play is about nine or 12 months after the ACL reconstruction. So for this purpose, we have to make a good physiotherapy. We have to regain the proprioception of the patients after ACL reconstruction. So there are some uh, screening tests after ACL reconstruction that we can we can we can make a good calculation for the return to play is the one of them is the lower extremity symmetry index. So if you if one play, player has uh, has uh, an ACL reconstruction, return to play uh, protocol and return to play requirement is there should be no pain at these knee point knee joints. He can he or she can do uh, jumping, limping without any pain, and uh, the player uh, has a nine over ninety percent lower extremity index score. So the jumping test of the normal and the affected knee should also be same. This is a good type of algorithm to return to play after ACR reconstruction. Uh, when we look when you look at that. The, the, the phase, phase one uh, is about two and eight weeks. Phase three is about eight and 15 weeks. Uh, but return to play is mostly at nine, on, nine or 12 months. So there was a myth that after an ACL reconstruction, the player can, can
came back to the field after six months, but it is not, uh, it's not possible in this professional world, in, in Euroleague basketball, in NBA, if the player has an ACR reconstruction, he or she can return back to play about nine or 12 months. So we shouldn't force the player to return to play after six months. We have to tell the uh, team management, team managers, uh, the players uh, that if there is an ACR reconstruction surgery, you can back to the field after nine months, maybe 12 months. So let's move to medial collateral ligament injuries. Uh, medial collateral ligament injuries is a is more minor injuries than ACR reconstruction, but we can see both uh, together with ACR reconstruction. So we have a grading system for MCL injuries, which is very common at basketball. If the injury is a uh, grade one, it is good, grade two, good. But if the injury is grade three, which is the valgus laxity at 30 degrees of fraction is more than 10 millimeters, it is grade three. If it is between six or 10 millimeters, it is grade two. If it is less than five millimeters, it's grade one. And we, we do this grating in the X-ray, forcing the knee joint at 30 degrees of fraction with the valgus uh, force. This is one an example. This is a 30 degrees of flexion at the left knee. And uh, there, is a, there is a 10 millimeter opening at the, uh, at, uh, at the medial joint, which shows us a grade three MCL injury. So it is important to decide where we do the surgery for MCL, where we can let the player return to field is according to the grading systems. If there's a grade one injury, which means that there's an edema at the MCL ten, uh, ligament, we can let the player back to the field about in two or four weeks, depending on the uh, player's uh, condition. But if the grade of the injury is two, I let the player uh, to play about in six or eight weeks. If there's a grade three injury, which is a total turn of the MCL, I let the player return to the, uh, to the field about uh, eight or 12 weeks. Uh, think that there is an ACL injury with MCL injury grade three. Uh, it is possibly um, obvious that we can fix uh, grade three injury, but if you want to fix MCL injuries, it brings us atrofibrosis of the knee joints. So in the basketball players, in professional players, I do not recommend to make open surgeries around knee joints. That's, that's why I do not prefer to make um, surgeries for MCL. But when you do ACL reconstruction, if there is concomitant MCL injury, grade three, first do, I do ACL reconstruction, then 30 degrees of knee flexion, I make a valgus load and look at the opening of the medial joint. If the opening is still high after ACL reconstruction, I do um, MCL uh, fixation surgery. If there is no opening, I do not touch uh, medial collateral ligament injuries because they all can heal without any difficulty. So uh, I'm getting end of my presentation. Uh, I hope you can you you all can understand uh, the the concept of the LCL and MCL injuries. If any questions about my presentations. Uh, I will happy to answer your questions. Thank you.